in this conversation, I'm going to ask you several questions. Uh, some of it's going to involve a lightning round, and then um, <laughs> we'll have questions from the audience. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, can you give us an update on the sale of Wapato Jail? I've never had that question before. Wow. That's a... Well, we have an offer right now on the jail. And uh, we will know by the end of the month whether that offer is coming through. Uh, I had been on the job, uh, w the day I started this jail had been open for five years, or I should say it had been built for five years but never opened. And it has been um, something that I've been working on since the first day I arrived, trying to sell the jail. We don't need it. It's expensive. And what we do need is to get the jail sold get it back on the tax rolls, and making an investment for the people of the state of, of, of Multnomah County. Thank you. So now I'm going to ask you for a little clarity on that. What is your personal hope for the use of that facility? Um, I, as I said, what I think the best use of this facility is, is to sell it and get it back on the tax rolls. It has been um, really an, an albatross around our neck since it was since it was opened. There was never the money to build it, and there or to, to use it, and there has never been the need for it. We have open dorms in Inverness Jail, and we don't need we don't need the space. Um, there have been has been discussion about a lot of other uses for this jail. It's in an industrial sanctuary. The um, the land use laws don't allow any other uses, and I just think that having uh, it back on the tax rolls is the best is the best thing for us. Thank you. Next question: Multnomah County is known for Sun Schools. Uh, what are you doing to meet the needs of all the people who want a Sun School in their neighborhood? And a particular interest is um, you mentioned in last year's State of the County uh, different support for Sun Schools and strengthening the infrastructure around that. Can you comment on that? Please too. Uh, everyone loves their Sun Schools. It is really one of our proudest accomplishments as a county is bringing partners in the community into schools to work with kids so that they can achieve great things. When we look to open new Sun Schools, we prioritize where the need is the greatest. And we know that there's a lot of need, there's been especially a lot of need in East County. And of the new Sun Schools that we've opened, since I've been on the board, uh, the vast majority have been in East County where the need is and where the families and the kids uh, best utilize those services. Thank you. Are you worried at all that the county is at risk of losing federal funds for core services by taking a stand as a sanctuary county, uh, specifically surrounding uh, the DACA issues? What I'm most worried about is the kids and families in our community who are scared every day because they don't know whether their husband, their father, their grandmother will be coming home from work, whether they will be picked up when they call the police because they need um, to get assistance. That's what worries me the most. And I know that as, as a Multnomah County Commissioner, member of our team, our values make ensure that we want to take care and protect everyone in our community. We value the voices of different experiences and um, we will not be bullied by a federal government that is racist and irrational. Thank you for the applause. Uh, the official timekeeper gave me five minutes, three minutes ago, so um, I may steal a little time. This is a tough one, Chair, and, um, but I'm obligated to ask you this question. Multnomah County's just come through a series of meetings where employees have talked about institutional racism. Some of your board meetings have been open with questions challenging your leadership. 
what is Multnomah County doing to move forward? What are you doing to move forward? What is your contrition? First of all, I want to thank the Multnomah County employees who have come forward to share their stories. And we are taking those very seriously. We know that institutional racism exists at Multnomah County, and we are committed as a board of commissioners to ensuring that Multnomah County is a safe and welcoming place for people to work. We've taken sev several steps. The first is um, we've immediately taken all complaints and they go straight to the COO. We have a no wrong door policy. So if people have a situation they want to talk about, they want to, they, those complaints go straight to the top. The second is that we're working alongside our employees to develop a workforce equity plan. That plan will be voted on by the Multnomah County Board of Commissioners on April the 5th. It talks about retention, recruitment, and how we can ensure that we start getting at the root of the causes of racism and eradicate that. The third thing that we've done is we've hired a professional national consultant to advise us on HR practices to ensure that our HR practices are proactive and not reactive. We know we have a lot of work to do, but this is an incredibly important issue. Our board is strongly in favor of moving forward, and I believe that working with our employees and our community, we're gonna get there. So I have one minute. We have one minute. I'm glad you're smiling. Uh, I was going to ask for a little clarity on that. You know, as leaders in the public space, many times uh, we make decisions or do things that uh, are not the best. How do you feel you've played a role in any of the institutional issues at Multnomah County? I try to be a courageous and compassionate leader but sometimes I fall short. And I'm working every day to try to be the leader that my community needs and deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to transition now and go to some questions from our audience. And as a reminder, everyone watching or listening today is welcome to ask a question. If you've written a question on an index card, hold it high for the City Club staff to collect. If you're listening, you can also submit questions via Twitter using the hashtag Friday Forum. I'd like to begin the questions with two high school students. The first is a senior from Reynolds High School, Yesenia Ramos Pacheco. Yesenia is an active member of the National Guard, a youth commissioner on the Youth Against Violence Subcommittee, and a member of the Welcoming Inclusive Sanctuary City Task Force for the City of Portland. Every day, ICE agents are separating families in our community. In Multnomah County, we have students who are either undocumented have or have undocumented parents. Groups are currently working to repeal Oregon's 30-year-old sanctuary city law, prohibiting the use of state and local resources to enforce federal immigration laws. What is the county doing to ensure the safety of immigrant communities? We are proudly a sanctuary county in a sanctuary state. When the, our current president first issued his executive order, I heard directly from our employees who are out in our community about the fear and the repercussions of this executive order. Moms weren't bringing their kids in for doctor's appointments. Women weren't showing up to get restraining orders against abusive spouses. People weren't, were hiding. And that's not okay. We immediately went to our community partners who work with families across the county and asked what could we do. And we heard from them that they needed support. So we quickly, quickly
quickly got financial resources on the ground to assist those families in preparing for the future. We're, we're committed to continuing this investment and we're committed to working with our partners. Instead of telling people in the community what they want and need, we're asking for their involvement in how we shape our future. Thank you, Yesenia. The next question comes from Faisal Osman. Faisal is a 16-year-old sophomore at Madison High School. Faisal is also a youth commissioner and is the co-chair of the Education Youth Voice Subcommittee. Faisal, are you here? Thank you for sharing how the 2014 Reynolds High School shooting impacted you personally and professionally, the service response from Multnomah County, and future policy that leads to reduction in gun violence against our youth and families. What do you see as the county's continued role in keeping students safe in schools given the context of shootings? As I said, I'm, I'm a mother. I have three kids who I send to school every day hoping and praying for their safety. It should not have to be this way. Unfortunately, Multnomah County is preempted at the state level from making a lot of the changes that we want and need to make. So I'm adding my voice to all of your voice, and especially you, the students, who make us so proud with the work that you're doing. We need a change. We need to demand that our kids feel safe in their schools, and if the people that we've elected to do it won't, we need to get them out. Sidney and Faisal, thank you for your uh, questions and participating. So we have some index cards. There's three of them. Nobody bought pens and cards. Yes, you, you're doing a great job. So uh, the first question off the index card here is, are there any county programs or plans for such in support of employment for immigrants and refugees. And I'm gonna expand on that a little bit. You mentioned the Capital Works projects. Um, besides the set-aside money, what, what's the infrastructure and the, the um, support for getting immigrants, refugees, and people of color in the workforce and maybe even stimulating them to become uh, business owners? This has been a priority for us. We know that with the huge investments that we've made in infrastructure and the big purchasing power that we have as a county, we spend a lot of money buying things. And it is fair and equitable that everyone in our community should benefit from these tax dollars. So we, um, actually I'm very proud and it's kind of geeky, but our purchasing department wins awards every year because they're so fabulous. And they've just started a new online portal so small businesses can register and then we will contact them. We get the message, push the dollars out into the community, letting people know when things come up so that they can participate. You know, it just doesn't happen by accident. We know that and if we continue to do things the way that they've done in the past, we know that it doesn't rise all boats. So what we need to do and what we have been putting a very concerted effort is to making sure that everyone has an, a chance to succeed and everyone has a chance to participate in our booming economy. It takes effort, it takes a lot of effort. The dollars that we um, are gonna invest in the fund will help a lot, will help let us be proactive, get out into the community to get people from wherever they are and help lift them up and get them the jobs in our, in our community. Thank you. This next question is a tough one. It came from an audience. I uh, perceive that it came from a student. Since you and other electives have spoken so much about the occurrence on June 10th, why have I as a youth who was there when two of my classmates lost their lives never saw more involvement from you to rally youth for gun control. Why do you only listen now that it's in the headlines? And that's obviously a perception and would appreciate your comment. 
I have been advocating for common sense gun laws as, as far back as I can remember. And I really appreciate that question because I have tried, and I know that many people in this room have tried to influence the state and the federal level to make changes. And what we've learned is that our voices aren't enough. We need you. We need you, the students, the voices of tomorrow, to join with us. I think sometimes adults feel like, oh, we can handle it for the kids, but it's not true. The reality is you guys are gonna make the difference and you're gonna have to lead the way. I am proud to join with you in strengthening our gun laws to make sure that you never have to go through another experience like you did on June 10th. Thank you, Deborah. We have four minutes, so we gotta make this exciting. <laughs> what is the plan to have the shelter open for children and families again? So we had to close our family homeless shelter last month. Um, I, we, had, we knew that the roof had been leaking, but once tiles started falling from the ceiling, I knew it was time to close the shelter. The safety of the families who are living there was my number one priority. And it wasn't an easy decision, but I knew that it was one that had to be done. We immediately moved those families into motels, which um, is not an optimal solution, but it's better than obviously living on the streets. Looking forward, we are trying to assess what's the best way to move forward, whether the, the shelter it can be repaired to be used again or whether we need to find another option. But a shelter is not a solution. And families, no family in our community should be sleeping on the streets or in a shelter. There is no way that a child is going to have a good day at school, that a parent is gonna be productive at work if they've had to sleep in a room with 130 other folks. So we um, had a campaign over the holidays and we're gonna do it again, calling on our partners in the community, people who own a multiplex or somebody who just has a room to rent. We need you to contact us and let us know that you're willing to rent a place to one of our families. Many of these families have jobs. Some of them have vouchers. They just need an open unit. Over the holidays, we housed uh, over 150 people, and we know that there are many, many more waiting. So I encourage all of you to get on social media, call your friends and relatives, and let them know. If you have a place to rent, call us and let us know. Thank you. We have two minutes, are you ready for a little lightning? So I'm just gonna give you a word and you're going to have about five seconds to respond. Bridges. Burnside Bridge, Lifeline. <laughs> Diversity. Important to our community, worth celebrating. Families. The heart of our community, no family should sleep on the streets or in a shelter. Police and sheriffs. Thankful for their support every day and looking forward to working with them to make our community a safer and more equitable place. Succession planning. <laughs> there are a lot of folks at Multnomah County who are getting ready to retire. We have a, we'll have a lot of job openings. So students, sharpen your resumes. We need your young talent at Multnomah County. Thank you. So we're at time, but one last question. This was an index card. It said, what are you looking forward to in the next year or what's next? And my version of the question is, what is your now?
we have a lot of work to do at Multnomah County. Not all of our employees feel comfortable coming to work every day, feel that their beliefs are respected and that they are giving, being able to be their true selves at work. And that is my number one priority this year, is to make sure that our workforce is strong because if people are not feeling comfortable and proud of the work that they're doing, they're not gonna be able to translate that into providing the best services that they can for Multnomah County. This is a wonderful, amazing, amazing community. I am proud to work for you and with you every day, and I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you.